So, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. And I want to welcome everybody here and those that are going to be watching it on our YouTube channel in the future. And um, the meeting is being recorded. And you can watch it on our Guild YouTube channel if you're not familiar with that. Let us know and we'll show you where how to, how to get a hold of that one. Uh, let's see, I wanted to just remind everybody of our Guild purpose. Uh, the purpose of the organization shall be to promote interest and skill in knitting, to encourage high standards of quality and workmanship, and to encourage the use of those skills for the benefit of others. And we couldn't have a more perfect program to express that how our, our, our guild purpose, uh, the um, Master Knitting Program and the 2KGA. So thank you very much. Um, member news, uh, the, only, the only thing that had been uh, published in the newsletter is sympathies to the family and friends of Joyce Holmes who passed away suddenly on January the 18th. Uh, you might remember Joyce did a, a nice program uh, on November of 2018 on t-shirt shawl scarves. And it was like leftover list strips of t-shirts and it was nice. So if you get a chance or you want to see that old news, um, it's in, a, in an older newsletter. It might not be available on the website, but just let me know and you can send you a copy of that. Uh, her obituary is also on the table for anybody who remembers Joyce or is interested. Uh, the service was last weekend. Uh, there's an organization that I've heard about in the past called Loose Ends. Has anybody heard of Loose Ends? Yes. It's, it's really a neat idea. Um, they finish handmade items for loved ones left behind. So if they match volunteer handwork finishers with projects people have left unfinished due to death or disability. So they have a website, which is looseendsproject.org. Loose and they also have a Ravelry group. So there's also information on the table, but we'll have something in the newsletter in March if anybody's interested in, in volunteering. They've got, what, 22,000 volunteers all over the world. So they try to match up people in a certain area. It's not like you promise that you'll get it done in a certain time, but if you're interested in that, I'll have something on Ravelry and, and also in the newsletter. Uh, let's see. Another exciting thing is Colleen, is it Rion? I was okay. She is also participating for the fourth year in the Knit for Food Knit-a-thon. Knit and it's not until March 23rd, so we'll have some more information on how you can help support um, support Colleen. Uh, let's see. And we'll have information in the newsletter on that. But uh, it's a worthwhile organization. They collected, I think, the, the whole, all the volunteers that knit what, half a million dollars they, they raised last year, and um, Colleen's going to up her goal because she's already hit the goal, so she's going <laughs> to raise it from $500 because she's already passed that. So anyway, that information will be in the, in the newsletter, too. It's a worthy cause. So she'll be knitting a car seat, car seat a car seat blanket. So she can't start till the knit-a-thon starts, so that'll be on the 23rd. <laughs> so watch, watch the newsletter, and I'm sure she'll have things posted. Uh, okay, our election is next month, and bios for the officers can be found in the January and February newsletter. I think we will have yours in March. Yeah. And John, John's will be in March. Uh, it's, you know, life gets in the way. You can't just get everything, get everything done. Um, now, we announced the slate of officers um, last month, but since then, one of the candidates, Carol Regan, has dropped out. Uh, she has a new grandson and, and plans to spend more time with him. But good news, May Webster has agreed to run in that position. So we have our slate back. We just have a, a change of places. So thank you very much, May. So she will be looking for help from, from people, for committees, for that. And that will be coming up. But uh, also, if you can either donate things for the raffle or contact people or have any suggestions of organizations that might be good. To, uh, you know that you could help solicit prizes so just keep in touch with with May on the, on the raffle part of it Let's see what else we, uh, we will always continue to take nominations until the time of the election so if somebody else decides they want to run against somebody be afraid so yeah right now, yeah. Now, now, I, I wasn't going to say this but since somebody said I want to remind everybody that the board members are all volunteers and they deserve the respect of members for the hard work that they put into their positions. 
I mean, even though I'm not going to be serving next year, I still plan to be a very active member and help wherever I can. Because this organization means an awful lot. I mean, I think Tony said it. Same, I feel the same way about I've made most of my adult friends through the guild. So it's uh, very, very important to support those that uh, that are are helping. And I, I know we never have a lack of help from people setting up for our luncheons and things. So I appreciate the, the support of the members too. Uh, is there any local yarn shop news? I don't know if we have any representatives. I know Michelle's working, so she's not here. Anybody from YarnCom? But they're pretty, pretty yes. good about posting what that what's going on in their websites, Instagram, and different places. So I think that's you know, check out what they're up to, which is always a lot. Uh, knit in updates. There's there's one knit in. We're actually just going to change the contact person on it. The the uh, firehouse subs Thursday night. Um, Kathy's not going to be the, the uh, contact on that. It's going to be Lee Bola. It's going to be. So we're still going to have the in-person Thursday night sub, subway, firehouse subs, mid along, or mid in. It's just going to be, you know, there's only a couple people, so they need more, more people helping, but they're going to keep going. So uh, we'll update that information so that if there's any questions, you'll just contact Lee and stay with They also have this new one that beats by Zoom, but this is the in person. Oh, yes. Is it the one on, um, on Olive? Yes. Uh, the forum, it's in the forum shopping centers, yes. It's a good group to get together with. I, just, I live south, so I'm not always able to get up to it. I plan to try to Is there any other announcements or information that I haven't shared that we need to before we go on to the business portion? Okay, uh, the minutes. Are there any corrections to the minutes from the January 13th meeting that were in the February meeting? Questions? Mm -hmm. uh, motion to accept the minutes? I move that we accept the minutes. Okay. Second. Okay, John, second. Okay, it's ever, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. <laughs> I said. Okay, uh, the minutes are approved. The treasurer's report, are there any questions on the December treasurer's report that was published in February, in the February newsletter? If not, that will be submitted for audit. Okay, other reports? Uh, admin VP, I don't think they had anything. Beth, did you have any announcements or anything? Can everybody hear me okay without the microphone? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have too much to say. One of the main things is that the newsletter deadline is February 23rd. Yeah. I got it right. Um, yes. So February 23rd. Yes. February 23rd, and I want to do. I want to build on what Joan was saying about participating and helping out, because you know what, the newsletter is really boring if we don't write things to put in it. <laughs> because then all it's going to have is the minutes for the meeting and the finance information and the names of all the people who made hats and a couple of pictures of people who did show and share, which is cool. Don't get me wrong, that's cool. But what really makes it interesting is the stories that you guys can put into it. So if you just worked on a shawl and you hated it and you loved it, which which of us hasn't done that? I mean, every shawl I've made, that's every shawl I've made. I hate it and I love it. Write it down. Write, write it down, you know. Use your words. <laughs> write it down. And, you know, that'll work some of the anxiety out. And then share that on the newsletter because that's gold for the newsletter. I, I love to read that somebody else has the same issues with knitting a shawl or fill in the blank, a sock or whatever as I do. Okay? If you've read a book, if you went and got a pattern book and you decided it was crap, 
<laughs> Please tell us all so that we don't all waste our money on this same book. Okay, <laughs> write a book report. You know, you've, you've been writing those since you were like second grade, right? It doesn't take very long to write a little bit of a book report. Send them in. <laughs> but, but, you know, you're good at it. But you're good at it after all this time. So write a book report. Put it in there. This, is, this, is, this helps make things a lot more interesting. That also goes for volunteering, and I know a lot of you volunteer. I also can look around and see there's a lot of you that don't volunteer. <laughs> and you know who you are. Here's one up here next to Eileen in the front. So if you've, if you've been one of the ones not volunteering, think about it. We've got a new board coming in, and they really need you. They really need you. It's a lot of work. <laughs> so. Okay, Pam's getting ready to come up here. I can see her. She's, she's going to be doing a... I just wanted to say how good it is to see so many people that I haven't seen for a while. We have so many people, and I know that I haven't seen you in forever, but welcome back. Okay. And Elaine I haven't seen in a while, so I know oh it's kind gosh, of a different place than, than the library, but it is good to is see everybody. Just All right. <laughs> well, Pam. Thank you. But we have the some that's actually on left and right. Yeah, yeah. I'm the chairman of uh, community service, and I'm wearing a hat that's beautiful, but I'm wearing another hat under it. Oh, as you can see, this is a bulky hat, just a little bit. It's going to fit somebody. <laughs> I have pretty good hair. It's a beautiful hat, but. Kind of have a thought about people because this is this is going to be kind of uh, difficult for maybe uh, some people to keep on. Don't it to the but it, it will go. Well, anyway, there's beautiful there's beautiful hats up back to back. So I'm, I'm trying to get them counted. There's a whole bunch of them. So um, just take a look at them uh, before we pack them away and get them get them going. Um, let's see, we're the T-top sweaters, anybody know about the, the, have you read in the newsletter about the T-top sweaters, Seven Sisters Yarn and Fiber in South County is kind of coordinating that um, in the newsletter, you can, uh, let's see, which newsletter? Was December's? It was last month. It was yeah. last month? Okay. Yeah, was month. I, I, yeah. anyway. Um, there's a pattern. I am working on a totally in the round, seamless, re totally reversible pattern. If you want to be one of the people that intrepid individuals that want to look at this my crazy pattern, <coughs> I can send it to you in an email. There are stitch counts that are incorrect. I can tell you that. <laughs> I have knitted. Um, I think I'm up to eight sweaters, but basically I'm doing the self-test, you know, of this pattern. Well, when you've seen the things eight times, you really can't tell if if something is... I can knit this in my sleep. <laughs> so I can't tell if something is really unclear or confusing or simply wrong. And, you know, I keep seeing stuff and it's like, Really? I changed that the opposite way the last time I looked at it. But anyway, um, give me your email address. I'm easy to spot. I'm the only one in sleeveless outfit today. And um, they, you know, I will, I will make sure that you get a copy of the work in progress. Yes? Pardon? Kathy said, said her one. Oh, I'll well, take one. you're gonna you're gonna have to give me your email because I I can't I can't remember anything <laughs> when I'm up. There. Well, well, never mind. You, you, you will you will if you, see if you give me yeah please do. Okay, any other questions? All right. Contact you on the rivalry. Yeah, anywhere you contact me if you if, you, if I answer you back and I don't answer you back if you give me, it's a really short time. Try another method. Okay. Oh, it's there. I do have an wow. update on the tea tops, though. Thank you. Nancy's here. Oh, well, come on. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, there's, there were 17 as far as I know. 
Yeah, we have more than that now. Yeah, see, nobody, nobody tells me no. Just watch wires, wherever they may be. There was some of them. There were two in the Can you grab one of the sweaters? Can you grab one of the sweaters? Yeah, so they can find it. Hold it up real hard so people can see it. Hold up the sweater. So people can see it. Thank you. So these are the sweaters. You talk, I'll be Hannah White. Oh, thank you. 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 So, Good job, then, John. So we have been, um, we at Seven Sisters have been working on the Snake for Kids project. Um, Nancy, who's here, her, mo her mother had made 134 of these sweaters. Oh, and yeah. decided, oh. she decided she was going to um, make sweaters so, to honor her mother. So we all at the shop, a lot of us have agreed or have mm -hmm. offered to help her paint the sweaters. So we have, um, in mid-January, we sent 14 sweaters to the Knit for Kids project in Pennsylvania. We have nine sweaters, and I've got, I think I have four today in my bag. And I'm not sure how many are in process. There's probably six or eight in process. So the goal is 134 sweaters. So, um, and I really thank everybody who's made one and who's been interested in making one. I appreciate it helping us make our goal. It looks like we have 27. It looks like, yes, me. What's the deadline? There's not a deadline. Until we get to 134 sweaters. The <laughs> Bible study guide said to Nancy. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, was, someone had made a comment to Nancy about having a goal that she couldn't reach. So we're going to show him off. <laughs> show him off. I'd also like to encourage people who want to do this. The pattern's available on the Knit for Kids website. Don't be like doing some cockeyed thing. Please use that pattern because the Knit for Kids people want the sweaters to look like they want to be like this. They don't want something else. So there are a couple other sweaters on the website. There's a little round one with a little round neck and a ruffle. But please use the Knit for Kids website. Please don't use something made up by yourself. <laughs> so I can't, I, you know, because I don't want them to not, not want them, not want to. So it gets me. Didn't you say originally they wanted darker colors rather than lighter colors? Um, there's, there's some color. Um, if you look on the site, they have some colors that they would prefer for children, not, not goofy things, I guess, not black, not a little black, kids in black. So, um, I, I don't, I, I remember seeing there's a color thing on their other site, but I really don't remember what they said. So, um, I appreciate everybody listening to me, and I appreciate everybody helping us get our goal. How, oh, many, I'm sorry. how many sweaters did you get this month? We got, um, I think we got nine. Perfect, wonderful. Yeah, so we have nine, and thank you, Alice, because you have me the sweaters. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. That you, you made a No, I just, picture. I've only done two, and yeah, I'll get well, more made down the road. That's, you know, with all of us pitching in, we can, we can get, get another box. I think out. you're up to 27 total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. 27 we, uh, is the total total. Yeah. We're probably ready for it to send another box. So, okay. so thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Yeah, don't forget your sweater. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yeah, take the sweater. Thank you. And we got four sweaters today, so we'll have to make sure the pay man stands to her tally. Yeah. Thanks for taking those back to the Oh, now. yeah, we, you know. Be very uh, careful how you come through. Let's see. This is everywhere. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 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 Today's program is John and Eileen about the master program from TKGA, Master Knitter Program. It takes a long time. Come see all this stuff in between or after. 
because that tells you how much work it is to do this. Next month, we're going to have a program on animals. This is my little goodie. This is for a preemie baby. The little tentacles keep the fingers busy so they don't pull out the tubes when they're in the NICU. So we're going to have several of those. Susan does a lot of knitting for her family. Not many of them are by pattern, but she has some that she will share with you. Uh, also, I wanted to share in teaching knitting, there's a group called Kids Knitting It Forward. They're listed in our knit ends. There's been a change. It's now going to meet the second and the fourth Sunday of every month at 1313 West Lockwood in Glendale, right next to Webster Groves. It's at Barry and, Lock Barry and Lockwood. If you look on the uh, Facebook page for Kids Today before, you can see that. Be aware, it says kids. The only limit we have is you have to be 10 years of age. <laughs> Older than that, we don't care. We will teach you. So we enjoy doing that, and we have all the supplies that you need. The idea is to learn to knit for charity and then keep the skill for the rest of your life. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next, <laughs> next month. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, I was looking at loose ends, and my friend Carol and I went to Charleston, um, South Carolina, and we went to the museum, and there we saw one of the oldest UFOs. <laughs> in the world. <laughs> it was from like 1799. It was a cruel embroidery. It had all the pieces. So maybe we could send that to the <laughs> <laughs> This is my birthday month and it's time to be grateful. So I'm very grateful for all of you. Um, I'm grateful for my family and I'm grateful for knitting. It really has brought, as Joan says, it's a great way to make new friends when it's hard. So today, we have five visitors. Um, and we encourage you to join so you can win the fabulous prizes. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel Son, Son, welcome. Teresa Getz, welcome. Kate Stopsky, Welcome. Hey. Leslie Smith, welcome. And she is a very kind lady. She offered her seat up to another lady. She's exactly the kind of person we need in this guild. <laughs> Kindness is always the best. And Denise Cole, welcome. I love it. <laughs> okay. Sixty-four people, which is fabulous. Um, it's just fabulous. What can I say? So more chances to make more friends. So on with the show. We have Eleanor Lepper. The one out of five. Cool. Come on, come on, come on. It's very crowded here today. And this is the ball being Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You can make um, a tea top sweater with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I it's it very off. soft. Uh, Melanie Elson. Melanie. Thank you. It's a mini bin. That's what we need. There you go. It's cool. Crocs, sister. I love Crocs. Okay. Debbie Rimmel. Debbie Rimmel. Okay. Come on up. Okay. Anita Albright. Okay. 
And then after you're finished showing it, go back. To, if you haven't already gotten your picture taken, Lee wants to take pictures so they can go into the uh, on Instagram, but also in our newsletter. And then we'll put the um, I'll, I'll do a bundle too, and I'll add those projects on the uh, Ravelry. So. Yeah. All right. This is a soundtrack pullover. Uh, Let's see, I forgot the name of the designer. Okay. The microphone's right there. You need the microphone. Hi, this is the soundtrack pullover by Marie Green from All I Knits. And I use uh, blue sky worsted non super wash wool. And it's considered for an advanced beginner. And what's the other one like? Yeah. It's uh, literally it's you work with that row and then slip the stitches. Mosaic. Oh. So these <laughs> yeah, and I finished it at eleven o'clock this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, 
Well, this is a scarf called Wheat. And this is by Tim Candence. So it was a fun pattern to work with, and it's Mythic's Chroma, so it came out really nice. You got that? And then I don't know if I ever brought this out because I did during COVID, but so I brought it to um, This is something called the Tracks of Union Station, the Nashville Collection. <coughs> Some of us went to Nashville to the yarn shop there, and I got the pattern. It's been a Joe Strong pattern. And uh, anyway, it was fun to knit, and it's been sitting in my closet all this time. So I thought I'd play it out. Exercise ring closed. Oh, yeah, you can buy the pattern on Ravelry, but I got this at the store. But it's with Madame Latosha. It just came out really nice. So that's all I have. I mean, it's crazy but it's not This is the best. I guess you could change it if you wanted to, but I don't want to. No, I was just. Oh, it's okay. Do you have a details on it? Oh, I do. <laughs> I knew you wanted something. Hello, I'm Vicki Berry, and I'm back in the country for a while. But this is one of the sweaters I knit on a recent cruise, and it's called Barcelona Pullover by Kenya Lee, and it's from this Love of Knitting magazine back in uh, the winter of 2016. I made it with Cascade Echo. It's a, it's a worsted weight, and the front is the same as the back. Oh. And if you know me, I love sweaters that have a lot of different texture. So yes. that's, that's, that's why I picked this one. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to turn mine in before I forget it. There you go. Woo! Okay. I found a really fun pair of socks to knit. These are called Tipsy Toes 2. They're knit with sharp rows up to create these patterns of color going one way, this another way, this is self-striping yarn. It is a toe-up sock with uneven increases, to, so each toe will slant, the tip, tip of the sock will slant to match your toe. So it's really a fun knit. I have to admit that the pattern was really unclear to me. It was written by a German woman who <laughs> translated it to English. I read both patterns in English and in German. I didn't understand it any better. It wasn't until I got on YouTube and found a Japanese woman demonstrating the technique in Japanese with subtitles in English. I encourage everybody to have that experience. <laughs> Take a break. Check out the beautiful items in the back, and there's a lot of patterns on the. Oh yes, yeah, so check out the. I link that to check out all the it's materials for the for the program too. All the little samples and the books and, and their binders. So check that out. So we'll take about a 10-minute break so that they have a chance to answer questions and start the program. Today we have with us two industrious knitters. Can I have it a little quiet? Thank you. Conversation needs to be quiet, please. Thank you. Is the microphone on? There's a switch. Is that better? Okay. All right. We have with us. Eileen McKelvey, right? Yep. She has finished the Master's Knitters Program, 2018. She started in 2009. So she spent a lot of time on all of these things up here, and I'm impressed by her final project. John Colley has started so that he can improve his knitting. He may be a sock master right now, but he's going to do great things later. So, John has been at it for about two and a half years on the first level. 
There are three levels to the master knitter, and they include everything from making samples to a finished project. So I'm going to let them tell you all about their experiences. As a teacher, I don't think I need to use a microphone. If you can't hear me in the back, raise your hand. <laughs> All right, um, just to begin, if you are interested in a link for this talk, I have shared it with anybody who has the link. So you can access the link through a QR code on the, st on the screen here. Mary has said that she will put it on YouTube at, with the, um, the link with the video for the, from the TV. I'll put it in as a comment. And in a comment, yeah. And there will be any number of ways that you can access any of these. So in this presentation today, I have linked to different sites and resources and, and things that are available and helpful. However, the way that I have had to set it up was kind of having jumped through many hoops to get it. So this, the connection speed is not really very quick. So I have downloaded the pages, and if I can remember which page code with which link, we're in good shape. If not, uh, we'll see. OK, so today, we are going to try to give you a reason why the two of us chose to do all that work. <laughs> Emphasis on all that work. It is a lot of work, but I think the benefits outweigh the disadvantages if you turn from talking about bettering your product, bettering your knitting, bettering your skills, bettering your understanding of what, what you're expected to do as a master hand knitter. Okay, there are different levels of, of, the, of the practice of knitting some people are interested in. I'm a scientist. I like detail. I like understanding why these things, these stitches go this way and not that way, or how I have. I'm a scientist. I don't need to go into all that detail, but I just like, I appreciate that. And working with this, um, on this project with Eileen, I didn't realize when I first met her that she was a scientist as well. <laughs> so she also has a, a shared interest in all of those details. And if you look at the, the, her work up here, it is apparent that she's interested in all those details as well. Okay, so we're going to try to give you today my introduction to what I've experienced thus far, a little bit of background about how I started knitting and then Eileen's journey from um, to where I am to where she is, a, a certified master hand knitter. <clears throat> okay, so today's goals, we have several of them. We're going to talk about what are some of the prerequisite skills, and somebody still is getting away from them over there. <laughs> what prerequisite skills are required before you start? And not everybody understands that there are prerequisite skills. I didn't. So that, that delayed me a little bit. What are the skills that are expected <coughs> for successful completion of level one, level two, or level three? And each of these different levels build on the basics and fundamentals of, of it. I'm going to give you my impressions of, of, my, of the program that I have finished thus far. And Eileen will give her opinions of the progress and her opinions of, of the progress after having completed all three of the different levels. We're also going to provide you with some information and resources about how to get started and what to do and what not to do based on my experience, <laughs> based on her experience, because we, we have shared uh, problems in developing uh, this presentation, we realized that we each had similar areas in which we needed to develop a better skill. And I took a, a course separate from the introduction to master, uh, uh, level one master academy, and she did the same thing and, and at least in several different parts in her journey. Okay, so uh, I'm going to say it's about me. <laughs> This is a kind of the 
preliminary talk that I gave every beginning lecture of every semester that I taught. When I'm up here in front of the room, no, this is not a classroom, but it's about me because I'm the one that has the remote control and I'm the one that's talking. <laughs> That's not really about me right now, but I want to give you some background about where I have come from in my journey thus far. And then I started knitting in 2021 during COVID. I and I kind of have a little bit. You went crazy, huh? Well, I was crazy already, just went over the edge. That's true. So I, I, my start, I started, well, I, I, will get, I will get into this a little bit later, but, but I'll, I will just suffice it to say right now that I kind of had a disorganized kind of frenetic style of knitting, and I was kind of, I jumped into the big pool, no floaties, nothing, I just kind of, there, there I am. Jumped in head first, and I really enjoyed my experience, but I, and I was challenged with everything that I did, which is okay. You ever need a challenge? And I have been described as some of my good friends, and you know who you are, <laughs> as an um, adventurous knitter. And I, I said, well, that's my, my sister heard that. She said, oh, adventurous? Adventurous? <laughs> adventurous. I, I would dispute the word choice, but what does a librarian know about word choices? <laughs> <laughs> I, would have, I would have chosen outrageous or uh, courageous or exciting, something more interesting. <laughs> At any rate, that's how I got my start. I'm going to talk, let Eileen talk now about her project, our progress. And we kind of, we did rehearse this, believe it or not. <coughs> this is a surprise. I'm going to be use the mic. I'm yeah, you're you're. This better? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. I learned to knit when I was about eight years old. I think yeah. one of my babysitters <coughs> taught me, and I knit this awful green scarf for a doll. It was all different sizes. It was awful, but I continued to knit off and on. I knit in college. I uh, knit a sweater for my then boyfriend, mm. and I actually went ahead and married him. Oh. <laughs> it didn't stick. <laughs> I knit some things for my, when my baby was born, my daughter, and I continued to knit things for sweaters and blankets for my grandkids. But all I knew was basics. Knit, purl, knit two together, slip one, pass slip stitch over, one cast on, knitted cast on, and a standard cast off. And I knew there was a lot more to it than that. Somewhere around 2008, I discovered online resources. And that, at that time, there was a big online resource called Knitter's Review, very active and a lot of good information. <coughs> it's, it's now gone. Um, and then Ravelry came around. And I started to explore. And somehow on Ravelry, I heard about the TKGA. And that's what got me started. So why I started to do this? I'm goal-oriented. And if you've been here and seen some of my show and share projects before, you know that I start something and I don't quit till I get it done. And it's having a goal that keeps me going. And I like organized, structured projects. I like to learn new skills. I've, I've started and done lots of new things since I did the masters. And one thing is, I wasn't particularly interested in learning to design a sweater from scratch. And that's, that's the ultimate project in the, the Master Knitter program. But I knew that even though I wasn't going to be designing any more sweaters, that I could learn, apply what I learned to existing patterns and make them better. And we know that every pattern, there's something you can do to make it better. Make it fit, make the, make the increases and decreases mirror and look better. So that's why I did it. Okay, so the, there you go. this is 
she'll be back. <laughs> we really just didn't want to talk about her experiences, and we did. We hadn't clearly communicated that with, with our in our rehearsal. So, when I started, I really didn't know what I didn't know. But all oh, those two needles or four needles or however many needles they go, they interact somehow with the yarn, and you get the result. Okay. I found this uh, Knitters Guild, the St. Louis Greater St. Louis Knitters Guild through the TKGA because you were linked as a resource. So I found them, them first and then you. So I went on a search to find out why I had so many troubles with just very basic things. Everything that I had seen in this meeting in here, people were doing very nearly perfect work. <laughs> why, do I, why am I having so much trouble? I'm a professional, I understand the details, but why am I having so much trouble? I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know why all my stitches looked so wonky. I didn't know what a uh, gauge was. I didn't know why I had more or fewer stitches after the cast on of 10 rows later. I didn't know what I didn't know. On that search to find out what a long tail cast on is. <clears throat> now I know probably four or five different cast ons, but I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know what a stretchy bind off was. Now I do. It's not because I, you know, I'm kind of inquisitive. I'm stubborn, like Eileen said she was. <clears throat> she said he trying. Uh, again, I have to be careful about word choice, don't I? <clears throat> Uh, one of the first things I shared and show and share was a pair of socks that I could knit three or four different pairs up because one was this size, the other was this size. <laughs> I, I am stubborn, it's not determined, stubborn enough to go to that level to get something that fits right, that should be right. <clears throat> so again, I didn't know what I didn't know. What is, you fell in the blank, I didn't know. So I'll give you a my thought process, how I give my thought process in COVID 2021. See this graphic? <laughs> Everything everywhere. November 2023, when I was supposed to be given this talk somewhere in last fall, I was much better organized. I understood much better how things meshed, how things were supposed to work. So my very first project, how I started knitting, I was taking care of in COVID, elective surgeries were not allowed for any number of months. My mother had to have a hip replacement surgery in fall of 2020, and I was there helping her rehab and go through recovery, recover. And while I was there, I was cleaning out closets and drawers and things, and I found a pair of knitting needles. I, my, my mother never knit, my sister never knit. I didn't know where they came from. She said, well, from cousin Cora, who, who lived in Oklahoma. She visited us in 1985. She left them. <laughs> I said, what do you want to do with them? I'll just leave them. Yeah. My, my mother is a depression era person. I've never heard of anything that might have stacks of papers and things scattered around it. Oh, I know where exactly where that is. It's two-thirds of the way down on that stack. And guess what? Guess what? It's two thirds of the way down on that stack. <laughs> so after her, she recovered. When I went back to my home, and I had a soap container. I'm kind of, you know, I'm stingy when when it comes to certain things. I hate to throw away a little bar of a piece of a bar of soap. So I, I bought. Not this one, this is the one that I made for my first project. I got those knitting needles and tried to repair one that had, was damaged, was frayed. There was only about an inch and a half of fabric or, or fiber coming out the end, and these needles were size 10. <laughs> Six, I think they look like they're 14, 15, 16 inches long. They're very large. Uh, of course, I couldn't get any bite because I would have to unravel the whole thing. Well, that's not what I did, but I got, went to Michael's and got some twine or something and made that one. 
of my very first project in March of 2021. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of updates. I showed this pair of stocks here. This was 20 of September of 2023. And these are one of my latest projects, not my latest, but I have made some improvements. I'll put it that way. So how did I have that happen? Wait for it. What's the topic today? To KGA. Master and Nether Thorin. And I have to attribute a lot of my successes to my participation in level one. I, I uh, looking at level one now, I, I probably realized that I signed up too soon for it. But I hadn't mastered the prerequisite skill, but all of them, not necessarily some. I had mastered some of them. We, we, let me rephrase that. I was competent in some, but I hadn't mastered any. <coughs> so by look, take, going through that process, and this is a lake, by the way, it links you to the master uh, hand knitter program. I'll try to link it and see what happens. Give you an example of what. <laughs> there. This is, this is a, mass, a group uh, for uh, on Ravelry for Master Hand Level 1. So if you want more in detail about it, there's a there's Master Hand, the Dinners Guild Association, and then there's the Ravelry group and, and other resources that, that I will describe to you as well. Okay. So there are three levels in the program, and Eileen has generously brought her materials from all three levels and one of the other courses that she took uh, between levels one and two, I think, but to, uh, about finishing it. So if you have an opportunity to, and you didn't have not already looked, I would welcome you to come up and look after the talk. And, and also, if you have any questions, I, I am not averse to answering questions during the talk. So. If you have a question, you want to raise your hand, that's fine. I'll, you know, if I don't see you, I'll have somebody to point to, to you or, or me or whatever and, and if you have any questions. Okay, so the Master Hand Knitter has three basic levels. And these are all have some components of research, writing, digesting that research, analyzing the, 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 the techniques and the stitch anatomy, Gauge any number of different ways that they provide, they steer you in through these and negotiating these different topics and understanding to a deeper level than just you know put your needle in here, wrap it around, pull it out, you're done. You know, I mean that, that's not what happens, and, and they kind of guide you through. Well, what happens when you have a knit on this side and a pearl on that side? There's going to be some different scientifically. They don't say scientifically, but they're they're asking you to think that way. You can use more yarn on this from this stitch to that stitch. What's it going to do to the stitch and atom? I'm speaking now as a scientist, so ignore me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. So the process first, you have to be a member of the TKGA before you can sign it. I sign up and purchase level one. And I got the pricing you know, on another slide here a little bit later. Download the instructions once you have uh, received them by email usually. Read the questions and the, they're very well organized. They will give you um, a number of swatches that you have to answer questions on. Say swatches one, two, and three, you will answer these questions on these swatches. So take the time to pair those swatches, those questions with those swatches and don't delay answering the questions until after you've completed them by four weeks, five weeks. Do them at the same time because it will help guide you through that through that process. So I, I have been told that I'm just standing in the way of my presentation, so I'll try to stand over here. I'd like to move, so I'll take, stand here, or now dart over there if I really have to. Okay. So then I, I think this is kind of the next point here is to do the work. 
That makes it sound so trivial. Okay, do the work, done. <laughs> That's not how it happens. Because I, I know my experience, I know Eileen's experience. I have worked through several different, the same swatch, numerous times before I get it to the point where it feels like it's my best work and I would want to submit it for review. So, uh, the binders up here, these travel uh, to the reviewers, and to at least two reviewers on level one, or the four reviewers on level three. Two, two on levels one and two, and then four on, on level three. So these travel all around the country from reviewer to reviewer. So those are different things that, that happen in the process. They give you a critique, positive, and things that you could improve upon. They may ask you to read submissions of certain um, articles or, or a certain report may have, may have some deficiency. Swatches may not be good. And I'm going to give you a website here to, to select or to review to kind of check your work. But you get a, a detailed analysis uh, accompanied by those requests to redo some part of your submission. And you submit the work that needs to be redone, sometimes more than once. Um, and I think we talk about that a little bit. So when everything is satisfactory, you have passed that level, whichever level you're, you have done, and you're ready to go on to the next level. So at the end of level three, you get a certificate, and you get a, a, a small pen. And I, I don't have the small pen. Eileen has a small pen. You don't. I covet, covet the pen, but no, never mind. <laughs> So there are several different ways that you can get information about how to proceed. You can go to the TKGA website, which is a Ravelry group that's specific to uh, each of the levels, level one, level two, and level three, with great examples of work that has been submitted. These are, are uh, groups that are sponsored by uh, TKGA. So they have, they post these the different pictures and examples uh, let's just go here real quick. This is level one. And I'm going to talk about this swatch here. But the, these are combinations of swatches, or a representation of swatches, that have been submitted to complete the requirements for level one. And so you have a, a good way to measure your work and see what the expectations are with this level. Let me go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. There's also a Facebook group that uh, is designated also to the Master Hand Letters Program. I'm not sure exactly what it contains because I, I don't reference it that often. Okay, wrong way. So the review process, I can tell you from my part, uh, my experience is having done a taming tension course, meaning that I was having a significant problem with my tension when I was working the swatches, and I had asked one of the co-chairs, Heather Storta, uh, you may, some of you may know the name. She said, well, I would suggest that you do this taming tension course with one of our um, other uh, chair, uh, Meredith, because one, I did. And I would make she had a, a, a course and you did the number of swatches and you got reviewed. I had very high anxiety because I wanted to make everything easy, the best that I could. So I would send them, mail them off to her in Arizona. Uh, and then she went on vacation to Mediterranean and I didn't have it back. For every minute that she was waiting to review that, my anxiety level went. <laughs> so then I calmed down, I got the letter back. I think you're going to really enjoy this result. She sent me an email. I think you're going to really enjoy reading the letter. Because she told me some very positive things about my submission. And then she told me some things that I needed to work on. 
which is, I think, a very good approach <laughs> to helping a student understand their weaknesses and, and their abilities. Okay. And there's going to be some examples. Eileen's going to present some examples about her feedback from her reviewers later on in the talk. What I learned at this point was, don't give up. Even though you may think that you are not doing your best work, there is something meritorious about your work, even if you don't recognize it yourself. Because you've taken on that responsibility to, to sign up for a level one or to sign up for a, a course. So you are, you are interested already in that, gaining a better understanding of what you're doing. And this is a comment that, that I need have. When you get a review letter, highlight the two different colors, what, uh, or the good things in, in, in the, the review, and what you need to do or redo in that, that solution. So you should have the, uh, a higher ratio of the good things to the bad things. <laughs> that will be a success. And. Uh, sometimes it takes, and this was a very, I, I'm not familiar with the man who uh, I was telling about, but he was a well-known designer. On his way to being a well-known designer. On, on his way to being a well-known designer, and before he, could, I'm not sure what level this was, but it was, he had to resubmit one, the same swatch five times. So, be, and, and the point is, not, Neither perfection is expected, nor can it be achieved. We are hand knitters. If these were machine knit, you would have a better chance of getting perfection. But hand knitting, because we can't maintain the same tension. And if after an eight-hour session <coughs> of knitting, how many people find that they do more errors in the last four hours than in the first four hours? <laughs> Why do you think that is? Because the human machine, human machine gets tired, and you have different tension at different parts of the day based on your position, your ergonomics, how you handle. And I, I apologize, I stood in the way again. Okay, so neither perfection is expected nor is it possible to achieve. However, there are pre prerequisites. And I'm going to go here again to I downloaded all of these before here prerequisites. Okay, so I'm I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, but this is a really great site for you to explore if you're interested in doing the program. You would probably want to take a uh, look and see what are the acceptable submissions in, in, in terms of achieving uh, um, a positive result. So um, uneven tension from row to row. This is usually indicated by uh, if you're a thrower, that may mean that you have looser knit stitches. If you're a continental knitter, that means that you may have looser pearl stitches. Your method of knitting, typically you can predict which one of those is more likely to be the looser row uh, and flat knitting. That's my most likely <laughs> to do. Circular knitting because you do all knits for the most part. And you don't have that same kind of issue. Now I didn't know that when I didn't know what I didn't know. Now I know a little bit more and I can be just a little bit more dangerous. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in, in seed stitch or moss stitch, depending on which side of the Atlantic you live, live on. There are holes in it. Those are, those are examples of unacceptable, uh, unacceptable work. Ladders and cables, cast off and bind off edges are either too tight or too loose. So there's, those are, these are the prerequisites. And I'm going to go here. Uh, weaving in yarn tails, if they're visible from the right side of the fabric, that's an unacceptable weave in. And they, they give you techniques so that they will be um, less visible or invisible at all. 
If you have uh, split yarn or drop stitches or twisted stitches, those are all unacceptable. And these people, these reviewers have eagle eyes, I guarantee you. <laughs> They can, and there, there are fabric, there are, are yarn requirements that allows them to be that critical. Okay? Because they, you know, a darker yarn, they wouldn't necessarily be able to see them as, as, as easily. Okay. So these are examples of acceptable work here. Uh, on the garter stitch, we need to approach a ribbing, there is no guttering. Guttering is more visible on the opposite side, the back side of the fabric, than it is from the front side. Once you know what you're looking for, it's equally visible on the front side. But if you don't know what you're looking for, if you don't know what you don't know, you're, you're in good shape. Okay. So there are uh, different things. In, 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 they suggest how you, how in this program, they would like for you to weave in tails mainly with duplicate stitch or in stitches along the rib, up, up one column and down the other column. These are not um, necessarily things that will, will cause a failure, but there are requirements. Okay. So the three levels, and here's where the rubber meets the road, the cost of the levels. Uh, for the first level, it, it says a 12-month period to complete. That's what they set. Um, there's quite a bit of variability. Uh, the fee is $105. For level two, 18 months to complete, $125. Level three, um, $150, and that is a 24-month period to, to complete. I don't know, there's one person I think it was Eileen who did the first one in six months. Yeah, less than you know, six months or so. That's a that's a that's a very quick turnaround. Okay, but there are also other costs and fees. And the, the amount of yarn that you require that is required will be variable depending upon the level that you're doing. Uh, for that sweater project, I. I'm sure that there was, was more yarn needed than four or five skeins total. But for level, at least level one, they suggest three to four. I always buy an extra one because I, I just want to have some insurance. And they require that you use either a pastel or natural yarn color. So that they can see all of the different errors that you might make. And they suggest casting 220 Wool of the Andes and Fisherman's Wool from Lion Brand, uh, Joanne's, right? And in the level one, the con the project uh, that is, is current in the current requirement is this mitten. And the contrast has to be bright, but not dark. So I couldn't use a navy blue background with a white stripe. That would be just too dark for them. So it has to be a light yarn as well. Um, just a minute. In the binder, a notebook, because it has to be shipped all over the country, probably should be a better one than, than a uh, cheaper one. Because cheaper ones fall apart within a day or two, you know, relatively easily. So $15 to $25, I think I pay a little bit um, closer to $25 for mine. These page protectors in here are not inexpensive. And um, you said that, uh, I mean, told me she had some that had covers and lids that covered on to keep the, the swatches in. Labels, five to ten dollars. Postage, uh, ten to fifteen dollars. I'm not really sure about that, but I'm going to estimate that. But there is good, one good thing. The box it is free from the postage. <laughs> <laughs> so do you mail the notebook after you've completed all of the yes. assignments in that level? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm sure somewhere in here there are reports that are, are copies of reports. <coughs> yes. So you put your whole submission in the notebook 
put the notebook in the box, pay the postman or the post office to ship it to the reviewers, and then you wait anxiously. <laughs> What's the normal turnaround? Uh, you know? uh, it depends on the, the number of people that are on vacation. And if you submit it in the summertime, you have higher chances of having a longer delay because people go out of town. Uh, in the fall, I'm not sure whether that's any big difference, but I, I know that my, the submissions on my Taming Tension course, I would get them back within about two weeks. But I, this was a course that I was having just one-on-one -on -one with, with the instructor. So it wasn't like they, that she had to send them to another person for analysis or another person. So I'm estimating four to six weeks. I think level three is, is two to three months. Yeah, uh, and because they, they have four reviewers that go, have, they have to go to. And yes? After going through this, do you think or do you feel that when you knit something for yourself, a pair of socks or whatever, the question is, after having gone through this, do I feel that when I'm preparing an item for myself that my knitting has improved? Absolutely. 100%. I agree. I, I don't look at the project in the same way. Because I, I understand now what happens between a knit and a pearl and a pearl and a knit. I know how to maintain the tension. Uh, I, I use combination knitting when I'm knit, 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 knitting two by two ribs. Uh, how many understand what combination knitting is? How many do not? Okay. So there's one thing that I can tell you that I learned through the Taming Tension course is there are two ways that a stitch can be mounted on the needle. The western orientation, which is the left leg leaning on the forward on the needle and an eastern mount, which means the, the right leg leading on the needle. If I use an eastern, this why it's called combination, I use a western mount for some stitches and eastern mount for other stitches. So when I'm going from a uh, pearl to a knit, or a knit to a pearl rather, I use the eastern mount to do the pearl because that eats up that little, tiny little bit extra amount of yarn that is required that goes to go that opposite direction on the needle. And that was causing my knit stitches on the second column to be wide and fat. Not everybody has that problem, but I do. But I now have a tool that tells me, lets me know, I understand now the anatomy of those stitches, and I can fix that error myself. So yes, absolutely. Uh, all of these different things uh, that, I, that I have learned have been primarily a result of my participation in National uh, Handling. How are we doing on time here? Okay. So, uh, preliminary swatch, I'm, I may be rushing, but I want to make sure I link us through. The one thing that I did, how many people in here, every time they start a project, do a gauge swatch? How many do not? The, the nays have it. The one thing that I learned is a swatch, one of the major things I learned is a swatch is something that is almost mandatory that you do if you're going to understand the field of a barn. Right. If, you, if you're doing a blanket or something, eh. Yeah. 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 It doesn't make too much difference, but if you're doing socks, or yeah. sweaters, or vests, or any, any, or hats, yeah. anything that requires a perfect a fit, it is always good to do a swap. This is a this is a requirement of, of level one, and it's a relatively new requirement within the last several years. This was not a requirement when Eileen did it. But what you do, you, this is a worsted weight. So you have you work the swatch with a size seven needle, size eight needle, and a size nine needle, and you count your gauge based on each of those needles, and they, your gauge will fall within a particular range. That is, that works really well because it tells you not only about the drape of the fabric, 
it tells you about how you, your, your what gauge is required, if it is more appropriate. And it gives you a methodical approach to, to calculate an accurate gauge. And the hand knitters program and the TKGA have a slightly different way of calculating gauge. Um, if I were to ask how many people in here that do calculate gauge, or do, do a gauge swatch, how do you calculate gauge? It usually gives you instructions that over the course of 10 centimeters or 4 inches, how many stitches do you get? Mm -hmm. Right. right. That, that's kind of, so how many of you, I, I have really trouble, I have real trouble with it. How many of you can hold a, 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 a measure of four, four inches in width and count the number of stitches accurately at the same time? Yeah, you count the stitches. What they suggest is you count the stitches first and then the measure of the stitches that you counted. It makes it more makes more sense to me. I can I can isolate 23 stitches. I can still isolate those. I can take T markers and place those 23 stitches on the outsides of that T marker on the outside of those 23 stitches, and then measure the distance apart those T markers are. That to me is much more accurate as a scientist. Once, as opposed to like, oh, you might have. Yeah. So this. And yeah, this is uh, how they. This is a, a gauge chart that is uh, an example on you know, on your way to the master's program. Okay. Uh, but they. The lower section, size 70, this is not mine, this is an example. So you do this calculation, you measure 23 stitches to the width to within uh, within one eighth, and they give you a version here for uh, 4.375, and that gives you the number of stitches in 20 and 21 stitches in four inches. So if this is a worsted weight yarn, and it, yeah, they give you an example, and the, the recommended Stitch gauge is 16 to 20 stitches on a, a worsted weight. Size 7 needles give you a stitch, a stitch gauge and it's far too tight for that one. So you can choose, depending on the drape, either a size 8 US or a size 9 US and you would be within that suggested range. And depending on whether you are a tight knitter or a loose knitter, one or the other might be better for you. So that, this is an accurate way to, to measure your gauge. Uh, and they, in, your, in the submission, they have you mark the sewage rows so you get a, a way to measure these 23 stitches within those ranges. So not everything works out the first time or the second time or the third time. These are three swatches that I worked and then Eileen sent me her reject pile. <laughs> so, not everything works well the first time, and, and we, we, as adults, we all know that. So it's, it's not anything different. So I, I don't, I don't, don't even know why. Oh, I know why. They rejected the color on this. That the contrast color is too dark. Oh, oh no, no, it wasn't too dark. It was hand dyed. Oh. Uh, it's hand dyed. So the the tones might be inconsistent for one strand of the yarn to the next. And had I had I submitted that, I probably wouldn't have got dinged. But I said I asked them permission than, rather than forgiveness. You know. So <laughs> it was probably my fault. No, no, you can't use that. And I, anyway, so that was why I. I so there's a, there are in level one there are color work. Uh, Introduction to color working. There's no fair oil or anything like that. So uh, I have learned a whole lot so far as going from a person who didn't know what he didn't know. I have learned a whole lot. One, this is a deep-based learning process. I, you are never given the answer. I expect you to be directed to find the answer for yourself. They will give you all the resources and directions that you might need to understand that for yourself. So they, 
it's not a teaching class. It's not, it's not intended to be a class. It's intended to show your skill and your mastery of your skill. I have to remind myself to be patient. Not everything's going to happen. It takes time to master the skill. I have learned not to expect perfection. It's impossible to expect perfection from a handcrafted art and not to be too hard on myself. I got one comment that from the viewer said, you're trying to fix something that's not broken. Don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself credit for what you do well and don't make Thing too difficult. And about all, I have learned how to read my knitting. For the first several months, uh, at the end of every tutorial, I said, well, it's always good to know how to read your knitting. I said, what does that mean? What does that mean? What? Now I know what that means. Now I know why I have one more stitch at the end of a row than I, than I had on a previous because I know what to look for. I know when I have split the yarn more easily. Sometimes it's really tiny things that, that don't make themselves easily, uh, readily uh, identifiable. Okay, so that's my experience with level one. And I'm going to give uh, this baton over to Eileen, and she can give you some question. information. Yes? Did you finish level one? Or are you still doing it? I have done 19 of the 19 swatches. I have the project, the mitten project left to do, but I have, I, I put this away, well, um, this last year, been, you know, had been a bad year, uh, I just, with all the things that going on with my mother and everything else, I just put it aside. Now, after taking my notebook out, I'm really proud of what I did those months ago. Having fresh eyes, I'm, I'm more confident now of the submission than, than I was then, and I was pretty confident then. I'm even more confident now. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place. So um, a little bit later, there's going to be possibility for some support groups at local yarn shops, and uh, I'll come back and talk about that. Okay. We're going to have to watch the time. Yeah. <laughs> We, yeah, we have to be out at four o'clock. So. Yep. Okay. I'll talk fast. Um, so this is my a little bit more about what my path to getting certified involved. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what was in level two and level three, and then some of the things I learned about resources and how to write reports. Um, a little bit more detail on the review process, and then kind of my summary. Um, I started level one in January of 2009. I submitted it six months later, and it only took a, a, about a month before I passed. Um, I'm not sure how that happened. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, then I did the, what they call the professional finishing class, um, because I knew that in level two there were things on button bands, <coughs> buttonholes, seaming that kind of scared me. And so by doing a class where you do something and you get feedback from an instructor and then you do the next thing, um, it, 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 it gave, it, I learned a lot and I was confident in my skills. So then I started level two in 2011, did submit it until two years later. There were some changes in the um, requirements during that time. It, I had it almost ready to submit. And then some things changed, and because they have some pretty strict rules about um, getting things done in a certain time frame, um, I had to do, redo some different things. But I did pass. Um, then I did a mini course, and that those are kind of fun. It's, it's like $35. This one was on fancy cast-on and bind-offs. Um, so $25, they send you a thing of some instructional material. You do, do a couple swatches showing you know how to do it, and they give you some feedback, and you're done. I also, during that time, I knew I needed to knit a Fair Owl sweater as my project, 
And so I knit a Fair Owl sweater from somebody else's um, pattern to learn about it. Um, so that took a while. That took almost a year. But I started in January 2015. Um, I submitted to submit till 2018, and I passed midsummer. Level two count covers things like finishing, seams, buttonholes, short rows. You do a pocket, which is kind of a fun thing. Um, and then you do, for color work, you do a fair owl wristlet, and that's a picture of mine. Um, so there's 19 swatches, there's 19 questions. You do four book reviews, and I'll talk about them. And you write a report about the history of knitting. It's about a four-page report. You've got the Fair Isle wristlet, the uh, traditional Argyle sock, and you do a vest from a published pattern showing you how to do seams, buttonholes, button bands, collars, and that kind of thing. Um, and there's some pictures. Um, I w unfortunately, I wasn't wearing my level two vest. It went to Goodwill during my recent um, downsizing. <laughs> There's my sock and wristlet. And the one comment I got on the wristlet is that edging material, it shows it's black here. It's actually a dark olive green. It was too dark. I didn't ask permission. They accepted it, but they said you should have asked. <laughs> Level three gets to be what they call the fun one. You do all the, this is the first time where you get to use those different cast-ons and bind-offs. Uh, to this point, everything is, uh, um, long tail cast on and uh, standard bind off. On this one, you have to do different ones on each swatch. And it covers things like entrelac, intarsia, brioche, double knitting, elongated um, stitches, traveling stitches, and mosaic. Those are some of the things that are covered. So it is fun. You get to do all kinds of different things. Um, and I learned some things that I liked and some things that I didn't. You do 19 swatch swatches. There's a doily, which is kind of fun. Um, there's 20 questions, two book reviews, two magazine reviews, and then you write a report. You investigate some um, knitting traditions like Shetland shawls or Aaron knitting or something like that. And also fiber, because by this time you should have learned something about how different fibers work. And then the projects are a hat and a sweater. You need to do one in an Aaron style or um, cables and bobbles, and then one in a Fair Isle. So, so um, I chose to do the hat with cables and Aaron style, and my sweater's the Fair Isle. There are some pictures. And I'm sorry, I forgot to bring the hat. I wear it, and it was in my pile of winter things. Um, in doing the research, um, what's very important, and on the TKG website, there are articles called On Your Way to the Masters. And that is where you should always start. You should get your level one instructions and then go look. There's an On Your Way to the Masters article about how to start. It's, it's really a road map of everything you need to know. Here's an example. There's, that's just a partial list of all the topics that are covered. They've been building this library as long as TKGA has existed. They're updated periodically because sometimes the information changes. As you can see, there's one about the... I'm not, I'm preliminary swatch and then decreases. Fair enough. <laughs> so this, here's an example, a little bit about what that article looks like. Um, just some discussion about how to do the decreases, nice pictures of what works, and then probably maybe even more valuable is the references at the end. For each of the techniques, you have to submit two references. 
Number one is this article. Number two is something out of that list. You don't have if if you don't know what if you don't have a book that tells you something about decreases and you want to look, if you choose one of those, you're going to get it right. Yes, the the um, the requirements on references they have to be two. They have to match. So um, there are, and most of the time, especially decreases, you can find two places that tells you to do decreases the same way. But you don't want to do one that tells you to knit two together, and then another one that says knit two together through the back loop. That, that doesn't match. Um, then a little bit about writing reports and reviews. I kind of struggled with writer's block on this. Um, it's like, uh, you know, how do you write these reports? Uh, the purpose is to show that you did the research. You're not going after a Nobel, you're not going to get a Nobel Prize. <laughs> um, just show you did the research. Um, make an outline of the topics and then fill in the information. Um, so, you, what I did for the, the knitting history report, I just took that outline, I copied it into a Word document, and started my paragraphs, and just started that outline and added to it. And before I knew it, the report was done. And you notice at the bottom for this one, you have to have topics one through four. So doing it in outlines is a way to make sure that it gets done properly. Um, for the book and the magazine reviews, um, Leslie Gonzalez, who's one of the emeritus committee members, did a blog post about how to write a, a book review. And I took that blog post and she said, first talk about the cover, then talk about the, the index, and then talk about the, par the chapters. And that's what I did. I took my book, boom, boom, boom. And um, I, they liked my book reviews. I didn't get any comments on them. So the same thing goes for magazine reviews. And I wonder if they're going to change that soon. There aren't very many print magazines left. They're going to, I expect that that requirement's going to change. Um, I already talked about uh, mooding, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the uh, requirements. Um, but if you use online requirements, they, um, they want to know the link so that the reviewer can actually go easily to the link. So a little bit of technical skill in actually inserting your link into your document. So the reasons for those requirements on the references, they want to make sure you're using good information. Um, there are lots of videos probably even books that have bad information about knitting and knitting techniques. So they want to make sure you're going with good ones. They want to know what you actually have access to. So if they tell you, oh, you need to do a little more report, a little bit more on this, go back and read that book. And then, so you have your own, your own record of what to, where you got the resources. So as we talked about, Two reviewers for level one and two, four for level three, it takes a little longer. And this, here's an example of the review that you get back. They tell you what you did well. It's a lovely submission and it was a pleasure to review. <laughs> but, but, here's my comments. This wasn't too bad. I had to resubmit Swatch 4. Um, and it turns out this was one of those face palm ones. Um, I had done the swatch correctly, but I also had done some other swatches. I submitted the wrong swatch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> two minutes, he says. Um, but here's some, some good ex examples. Um, they accepted the swatch, swatch I had to um, improve my directions a little bit. So, looking back, I'm going to make it under two minutes. I'm glad I did it. 
Um, I've got a really nice library of good books, and I, I brought some in to show some of the ones that I used a lot during the program. I continue to use those notebooks. They're still out where I can reach them in, in my bookshelf. And I still measure gauge the same way that we talked about earlier. Um, I know where to look on the internet for good instruction, and when I did it in 2018, there weren't there many good videos. I use more videos now. Um, and I'm never going to love bobbles. Here, <laughs> here. And this is an example, I'm a little bit over the top of it. This is an example of what I do now for Gage. Um, it's a sweater I started last fall. Um, I use some different yarn, some different needles. Um, I measured Gage and calculated it before I blocked it, after I blocked it, and even a couple days later. And I've learned to just write all that down, because otherwise I'll forget it. Okay, one last thing. If you're interested, there are two of uh, our local yarn shops have offered space for support groups. Um, so level one, I uh, would expect would have more interest right now than level two or level three, because they, they tend to go in different directions with, with you know, the time variable for the other. But uh, if, if you're interested, let me know and we can set up a, a, a mutual uh, a time where we can meet in Yarn Comp or Seven Sisters or, or go. So. Uh, there's there's lots, lots of, of resources. So. <laughs> this is one of the things that are is happening in April. Uh, take your meeting to the next level. So this will be a link on there as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm working with Eileen. Oh, she was yeah. in champ. We had fun.